Well, let's see if we can start this without the pops going cray cray. Guys. I don't know why it's taken me 125 episodes to realize that no matter what, my glasses will always have a glare on them. Hello, and welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. This is a puppy interrupted crafting podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. I'm your human host, Gabby, and you can find me everywhere online as Gabigales and all my hand dyed yarn at Once Upon a Corgi and Once Upon a Corgi.com. Thank you so much to everybody who is a returning viewer and sticking with us to this in insane is a light way to put it year. <laughs> and hello and welcome to all new viewers. I had every intention of podcasting over the past like three weeks whenever Rhinebeck weekend was but um you know life it's this year. So I am here now. It is our episode 125. It is November 6th. And I'm taking a small break from the news while I record this. Um, do I have it playing in the background on mute behind the camera? Absolutely. Yes. Just in case. So I'm not really taking a break at all. I have a couple things to get into before we get into what I've been working on the past couple of weeks. And that is the pumpkin make along is happening with my fellow pump queen Joanna of Stitching the High Notes. We are hosting that until November 27th. It is on Instagram using the hashtag pumpkinmal2020. So make, create, and basically any craft, as long as it's pumpkin themed, related, colored, if it's pumpkin, it can be tied to pumpkins, we're in, you're good. We do have some prizes that came in. They are on the other side of the room as I have cornered myself into this little nook. Uh, but they are posted on my Instagram. They are at the Once Upon a Corgi Instagram, I believe. I will, there's links to that in the doobly-doo below. I thought I was so prepared to do this and now that I'm starting to do it, I just feel very unprepared. It's like constantly doing your first podcast over and over and over again. And that is basically what is going on. Uh, this weekend was supposed to be New England Fiber Fest, but due to pandemic times, it has been canceled. So that would have been our announcement. So with that, let's get into crafting things, starting off with what I am wearing. I am wearing my Zweig Pullover by Caitlin Hunter in my hand dyed yarn. The colorways La Dame Death for the pink and Oswald Vermeer for the body in my Marie Cutie base. I love it. It's a super cozy knit. And um, that's what my life's about this week. Cozy things. Yes, I am wearing a Knits for Pirates pencil skirt on the bottom and surprise to nobody, floral on black. Uh, I only have two right now, so it's the same two I've been cycling through. You've seen them a billion times. My phone did not turn off. Great. So let's get into the crafting. I have no new finished objects, I think. I don't think I finished anything since the carved pullover. If I have, I'll put it in next week. But I will start with the Ola Swift that I am currently working on. Um, I have not touched my... Uh, oh god. I forgot the name of it. I'm the worst friend. Sun glow. Put it in the show notes. I have not touched my sun glow tea basically since I got to uh, it like three months ago. So we're just not going to talk about it. But I have actually made some progress on my Mama cardigan. And this is by Pippin Pin. And I love it so much. I am knitting this out of Lambstring's Tra La La Sock base in her Live Deliciously colorway from Indian Tangled last year. I have finished the body. Um, I did not knit it as long once you block it out. I did try it on though. Um, it comes to mid hip on me and I think that's perfect for my style. So I have picked up sleeve number one. I am working on this. I knit basically, it doesn't look like a lot now, but it felt like a lot last night. I, um, got this far on the sleeve last night while watching the news. The bind off took me, no kidding, like four days to do. I don't know what happened to me. I started it on Tuesday. That was probably my mistake. Um, decided to do a sewn bind off. Decided 15 stitches in after it took me like three hours to do that because I just kept putting it down and not paying attention that I didn't want to do that. So then I unpicked those 15 and just did like a regular stretchy bind off. I don't know what I was thinking. It just, and it also took me like two nights to do that too because I would 
bind off like six stitches and then just stare at the TV. That's our lives now. We're not thinking about it. So I am knitting this on a US 5 on my Knit Pro Zings and I am so excited for this. I was hoping I could get this done for this weekend. <laughs> uh, I imagined taking finished object photos on our friend's boat. We are going to do a foliage Housatonic River tour this weekend. At least that's the plan at this point. Um, and I was hoping I could get it done for that, but I, there's, I mean, maybe, but if I only knit on this for the next two days, I could do that. Ah, we'll see, we'll see. Making no promises to myself. But I love, I love her patterns. It is this one color brioche textured body with stockinette sleeves. It shows off the yarn beautifully. I just, ugh, I love lambstrings yarn. It feeds my gothy soul and I love it. I love it so much. It is living in my Matter Root bee bag because yes, yes please. Again, this took me a very long time to work to finish that body. I don't know why. I've just been so distracted with everything else. The next work in progress that I have uh, not touched in a couple of weeks, I did show this to you when I cast it on and these are the Socks for Jake. I am knitting the Pisces socks by Laura Peters and I am knitting this out of a um, Ragnarok colorway that Jake dyed on our Isaac base which is 100% Superwash Polworth. So here is the lace panel and here is the stockinette back. I have done the heel flap. I am in the gusset. I just haven't had the um, brain space to think sock gusset at the moment. I'm also not really feeling knitting socks but he did ask very nicely for these and I haven't knit him socks since March so I'll get to it. Uh, I'm in no rush for these. My goal maybe is to finish them by Christmas so at least I can give him something hand knit for Christmas. I'm sure he will get knit things from my mom and brother because he does every year which is great because that means I don't have to knit him a lot of stuff. Uh, I am knitting the 72 sock size on my US 1 Haya Haya Sharps um, and I believe that's it. I just got my little Starfall progress keeper going on there from my advent of woolen minis last year. And this is living in my tiny matter root bag. I did the sock heel flap and then kind of just put this down. Mildly because I did cast on a new project. This is going to be such a short episode. We found out in May, April or May, that another couple friends of ours were pregnant and then because pandemic times I promptly forgot until they sent us the birth announcement. They live out of state so we never, we don't see them. So I did cast on a pair of Rocky leggings by Tin Can Knits. I think this is the back, that's the front. Uh, I did the one to three month size. The baby is at least a month and a half old by now. I don't know if I'm gonna finish these in time. If I finish them and the kids already like into their third or fourth month, I might just save these for another friend because Jake's friends are in that age group where they're having children's now. So it might be a good idea to have uh, just like a baby pile to pull from. I am using some scraps. So the waistband is La Dame Blanche on my penny base and the, I want to say body, but the butt, I don't know. The the main color is Ghoul Haunted Woodlands of Wear on a, a BFL base that I was testing out a couple of years ago. These are leftovers from my Zweig and um, this was, this wasn't a shawl, but then I ripped the shawl out. I think it was a Helen Stewart, one of her like shawl societies when I was trying to knit all of them. And then the colors just didn't, I didn't pick the right colors for the right shawl. I am knitting them on my US 4 um, Carbons. They're not my favorite needles with this yarn because the yarn is so thin and like this joint is very rough. I don't know if you'll be able to say because my face is in the way. But like it's a, it's not fun. It's definitely better for rounder plumper yarns. Uh, I'm in the part where I have to like, oh god. I'm at the part where you have to like separate for the legs and make like this little bottom gusset thing. So I just haven't been able to pick this up because it's not as mindless as what I need right now. So it's just been sitting there. I also realized halfway through that I put the waistband in up inside out. So like the little drawstring holes are now on the inside. I think I'm just gonna like pop an elastic in there 
and call it a day. I don't know if like having an eye cord be on the inside of baby leggings would be uncomfortable for them or like get stuck on anything. I I don't I don't know. It did make my friend a pair. Maybe she can flip them inside out and see if her baby hates it. I don't remember when I started these, but I was definitely like not in a very uh concentrating on my knitting headspace at the time. I think we were watching The Great British Bake Off. I don't remember. But yeah, I have started these. They have went by super quick. This was like two or three, like sit down and watch. Oh, we were watching Star Wars. We've been working our way through the entire Star Wars movies list. Um, so I think I did that in like one or two movies. And that's like living in my Eden Cottage yarn, um, like winter woodland bag, which was, oh, it's one of my favorites. And it's got, oh God, is that, it might have barbecue sauce on it. I have to give it a bath. Jake works at a barbecue restaurant now, so my life is just covered in barbecue sauce. And that's everything I've been working on. I have done, if you could do negative sewing, I've done negative sewing haven't even looked at my fabric stash. Uh, I have pulled out some of my fiber stash and it, I, like I'm kind of getting into like the fiber, not the fiber, the spinning. And I kind of want to spin a little bit. Yeah, I felt the need to pull out my eel the other day. I did. I didn't spin on it. I just took him out and dusted him off and said hello kind of thing. Uh, I did find a braid of Into the World that I got I think two years ago at Rhinebeck. So not Maybe last year's Ryan Beck. Last year's Ryan Beck, I got a lot of fiber. Um, and that was speaking to me. And I have a bunch of like natural fibers that are in my my uh, spinning stash. So I think I want to spin like one of my lighter Shetlands and that into the world and do like a color work thing with it and just feel the wools between my fingers. I did also go through my stash. So I have ideas. But also, I lost my mind during Indie Untangled. Lost it. Completely lost it. Uh, I have not really bought yarn, not including Ryan Bickup last year, I have not like sat down and bought yarn in almost two years, like a big haul of yarn. I haven't done that with the wedding and the wedding and just like trying to figure out my stash. I mean, I didn't buy that much of Rhinebeck. I did buy a bunch of fiber, but I did spin almost all of it. And everything I bought at Rhinebeck, most of that was for the wedding. So um, after like, I dubbed it four fiber festivals and two years of pent up emotional spending on yarny things and Indian Tangled unleashed all of that. I lasted maybe five minutes into the like release of all the the opening of the show before I started buying yarn. And then it didn't stop. <laughs> Looking at it now, it doesn't seem like, I mean, it's a lot, but it's not that much. So I'm gonna get into what I have purchased recently, which I have not done in a hot minute. Um, we'll go in order of the days. So Thursday morning, I am, I don't think I'm actually a test knitter because I am a like space case right now on, keeping track of things, but uh, my friend Sam of Samantha Garen Designs is designing a sweater out of Lavender Loon's Slub Fingering and Surrey Alpaca Silk blend, and it's a striped sweater. I don't think she has a name for it. I think it's just called the Lavender Loon sweater right now. Um, I am going to cast this on. I kind of want to cast it on today. I've been wanting to cast it on for like a week now. As soon as I got this in, I was just like, just text me numbers and I'll start casting on. So I got in Lavender Loon's Slub Fingering Base Shadow Singer. I did not look at the name when I bought this yarn. It didn't even occur to me until I showed somebody and they went, oh, that makes sense. So if you haven't read Akatar, Shadow Singer is, it's part of that. So this is Shadow Singer. Oh, and it's just this like gray, like light blue gray base with bits of twilight and purple and like a little bit of browns in there. Ugh. 
Like it's very much a cooler base, but you could definitely see some warmer colors in there. I've never knit with a slow base before. I've never had a desire to until Sam made this sweater. And now I'm, I want like 10 of them. So to match this, I got Rumor in the Surrey Alpaca Silk Base. And this was the color I was originally gonna go for for both colors, but she didn't have this on the slug base at the first update and I didn't have the patience to see if it would get uploaded later on. But I love these together. Ugh. It's a contrast. It pulls out all the warm tones in this in the slob base, I'm just mm, here for it. There's like little bits of like cool purples in here. I just, oh, I can't wait. Like this is the color I always go for and this is the color I always buy and now I will combine them into one sweater. It's perfect. I love them so much. Yeah, I bought this at like 10.05 in the morning. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. I've been meaning to cake these up and cast this on for days. I think I just have to do it. I also have to go through all my needles. I have no idea where any of my needles are. So the, ooh, God, let me throw that. So this is purchase number one. Purchase number two. I did go to as many of the live streams as I possibly could. All the ones that I really wanted to go to ended up being during times that I was also doing them. So I was a little bit sad that I didn't think about that, but eh, what are you gonna do? Friday, I believe I actually bought this, no. <laughs> So I had a live stream at 4 p.m. on that Thursday and I bought these at like 3.50. It was great. I went to Earl Grey Fibers, who was across the way from me at Indie last year, and I love her colors. I love her bases. I've never knit with anything in her yarn, but just her palette spoke to my soul. And they, she was having a um, autumn bundle. So you get this cute little linen bag, which I love. And inside is some wool wash, by Wool & Co. And it's a spiced apple butter scent. It smells so good. I just been keeping it by my bedside table. Uh, a little enamel pin of a pumpkin spice latte yarn coffee cup. Mm, perfect, yes. Oh, I should've. And she worked with Nerd Bird Makery for this one. And a little pumpkin spice tea drops and I've never seen this brand before I don't know how but it's um like this is the only packaging so you just pop this guy in your cup and it dissolves it's so cute I love it uh to be fair I just saw autumn bundle on her website and immediately put in cart I did not even read what was in it I, I that's like how um out of my mind I was I was like autumn bundle great buy it I don't care I'll take it Ooh, yeah, sorry then I did go yarn shopping, obvies, and there's dog hair all over it already. And I picked up these beauties. So this is her gunpowder sock base, which is a superwash merino yak and nylon. I have never knit with this blend of yak. I had a yak base for a while. It did not, it did not do well, but I really wanted to try this out. It is a fingering weight and I got it in the colors Dark and Mysterious and Copper Boom. And I want them to be together. I'm thinking a sweater. I don't know yet. I'm not really feeling shawls. I have a very large shawl stash at the moment and I wear them as often as I can, but there's only so many shawls one can have. I was thinking of doing the mountain sweater. I forgot her name, Natalie something. I'll put a poster here and her name down here. Uh, that sweater isn't a DK weight, but has that stopped me before? Absolutely not. No, it hasn't. Um, I'm not completely like set on that, but oh, they need to be get together. Just absolutely need to be together. I'll keep my eye open. Um, I do have Sam sweater and the Mema that I wanna finish. So I have some sweater time before I do this. I do actually wanna finish the Sun Glow before like next summer so it's done for it but no pressure on myself so then friday friday i went to a lamb strings uh live stream and i had no intention of doing anything uh my friend was over for a fun little rhinebeck sleepover and we were watching the live stream and then we were on her website and then there were things in my car and then i bought i bought them i bought them 
I bought a sweater quantity. <laughs> So this is Lambstrings Yarns Utopia DK. It is 100% Superwash Merino, and I got it in the colorways Leaky Cauldron and Apothecary. And my plan for this, is, thank you. My plan for this is the Alaska Pullover. I don't have the name in front of me. Um, I didn't put it in the show notes. I think I could spell it out, but I don't, yeah. It's a beautiful mm, DK sweater with like a, a tree line color work on the bottom. I originally wanted to do Apothecary as the body, but she only had two skeins and I didn't want to push it with the DK. I probably could get away with two skeins for a sweater my size, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And I was looking at the um, projects and a couple people switched it. So she has like a light purple as the body and then like a, a dark brown almost black for the tree line and a couple people did the trees lighter than the body so I went with that because I needed these two to live together. All you can see is my light and then the window. Ugh. I love it. I'm keeping these in the bag until I knit them so they don't get covered in dog hair. Ugh. I just, I love Lambstring's yarns. Her color palette is everything that I want and need. And it's just, I'm so excited for this. This might be my Christmas Eve cast on. I've decided. Yeah, I can do that. Yep. Yep. So that was Friday night. And then Saturday, Jake came home and I told him to take a look at the marketplace because I, he did ask if Trey Liz was going to be there. And I told him she was not. Also, it's the internet, so we can just order from them whenever we want. Um, but I told him if he wanted anything from the marketplace to let me know. So he went over to Birch Dye Works and picked out a skein of Lisa Frankenstein. <laughs> this kid's color, yarn colors, just blow my mind. It is on her sock base, which is an 80-20 Superwash Merino nylon blend. And um, it is everything Lisa Frank and more. And as an avid Lisa Frank fan as a child, I love it. So the plan for this is socks. He does eventually want like a very bright sweater. We have to talk about that. We have to, we have to be, he has to be very sure that's what he wants. So I grabbed, this was my Saturday purchase. Was that? Yep. And also my first purchase from Birch Dye Works. So I only ordered from people I've never ordered from before. And nope, I have lamb strings, but I got it at India last year. So almost everybody I ordered from this year are new to me, not new to me, uh, that's the wrong word, are dyers I've not bought or knit with before. There we go. I don't know when I'm going to cast these on for him. It's probably going to go in the stash for a while because I still don't want to knit on his socks. So those are all of the yarn things I bought. I lost my mind. I am uh, have no regrets and I'm here. I'm here for it. Um, and that is it for my crafting. I have a couple beyond crafting things and um, no real shop news. But if you're not here for either of those, thank you so much for coming. And if you want to hear uh, the rest of this ramblings, let's stick around. So shop update news. Yeah. Indian Tangled was amazing. I cannot thank everybody enough for shopping either that weekend or the week after or just in general and supporting the shop during this extremely weird times. It broke my heart not being able to be there in person, but it was such a fun weekend. I am just more excited to go back to the festival loop, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, I am packing up all of the advents for this year. So we have the advent of minis or the cadre of minis if you did the 24 or 12. I am working on those. I'm hoping to get those. I'm hoping to start getting those shipped out by next week. I have about half of them packed up. I want to make sure everything's packed and set and everybody's got the correct minis and all everything before I start shipping things out. So it's taking a little bit longer than I anticipated, but we also, I think, doubled what we sold last year for them. So I just was not mentally prepared to realize like how many there are, which is amazing. I cannot believe it at all. It still blows my mind. I'm so excited for you guys to see the colors. I'm oh, I'm gonna do the day-to-day -day release like I did last year on Instagram with the quote um, of where I got the inspiration for each color and I'm just so I'm so excited. I can't wait. 
I can't wait. I'm really glad there's no Crescent City is only one book because I can't. I can't do an app on one book. So that's shop update news. I am hoping to do a holiday update. By the end of November I'm going to take like seven to ten days off after I get these advents. We've been going non-stop since September basically and I am I'm tired. I am getting, I am tired. I don't know, I put makeup on so you can only like get a third of how tired I am behind my glasses glare. But that's also because of this week. So that's shop update stuff. Everything is over at onceuponacorgi.com. The Indian Tangled marketplace is still up. I'm going to leave that up until January and then in January I'll transfer everything over. Uh, yeah, so that's shop update stuff. The rest of this is beyond crafting. If you are not here to see any of that, you know the drill. Uh, reading. I've fallen down the reading rabbit hole and I don't want to get back up. Don't save me. This is not a cry for help. Last I spoke to you I was reading King of Scars by Leah Bordeaux. I have finished that. I have feelings. I can't believe she just left me like that. It was very good. I would recommend reading the Shadow and Bone series, then Six of Crows, then King of Scars. It has characters from both of them and I love them all so dearly. It really goes into like the backstory of a couple of the characters from the Shadow and Bone series where you just you're only getting an outside perspective of them so this one you really dive deep into like why they are the way they are kind of thing. Ugh, it was so good. This took me I want to say two or three days to read. I, and just like the book itself is gorgeous. The next book that I picked up is, um, I just want to get the cover of it. I don't know if it's going to work because I can never get the Kindle to work. I'm just going to put it up in the, I have, I downloaded and read From Blood and Ash by Jennifer Amontrout, Armintrout. Amontrout, oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> it is so good. It was described to me as a small burning ember that gets stoked into a forest fire. There is revolution, there are mythical beings of sorts, there's rebellious girl in a very religious city and doesn't want to be who they want her to be. It's just so good. Oh so good. I also downloaded A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I am hoping I can get into that tonight. I have heard that that is just a forest fire on top of a volcano level and I am here for it. Um, I have seen this on Book Talk. I've seen this on Instagram and I finally downloaded it and I love it. It was a very quick read. It was like two nights worth of stuff, but it was uh, so good. It was so good. So uh, I love it. She does have a third book coming out in this series, I believe, next year. I do plan on, uh, I do have the um, Kindle versions, but I think I want a physical copy of this book too. They're just beautiful. So I think I'm going to wait until the third book comes out before I buy it. I do have plans to pre-order Sarah J Maas's A Court of Silver Flames. Uh, word on the street is that there's two bonus sections in either the Target or the Barnes and Noble versions and they're two different points of views. So I'm going to buy both of them because I have no chill. There's no chill anymore. The chill is gone it gone. So those are um, the series I'm working on after this. I am going to pick up A Peculiar Peril because I am just so intrigued by this book and I really also want to start The Cruel Prince. But I know I need, I'm gonna need to read this before I dive into that world headfirst. Just yeeting myself into a black hole on that one and I can't Wait, so this is my plan for after that and then I have a very long list of other things I want to read. I need more stock in that stuff so I can read and knit at the same time. So those are my active reading plans. I am um, slowly going through, I did pick this up this week, in Moira's 
Mora's uh, Green Witchcraft. It's, oh, there's four of them. Oh, that's neat. It's um, basic witchcraft basics, um, focusing mostly on um, green witchery and going over holidays and like holiday rituals and stuff. So that has been super interesting to flip through. I'm not reading it in order. I'm kind of just flipping around and whatever I'm thinking about that day going through this. So this was a super interesting read. I don't have a lot of like reference books, but I do love them. So I think I'm going to grow my reference book library some more. I'm gonna need to buy some more bookshelves soon. I haven't cataloged my newest books. There's Cruel Prince, which is also stunning cover. Come on, who gave them the right to do something like this to me? Uh, I have not cataloged these yet into the shelf. Everything is alphabetical because that's how you store books. So I have to do some rearranging to make them fit slash make sure I have room for the rest of Cruel Prince. Because I don't know what shelf that's going on yet, except for Harry Potter. Um, you can't see them. Um, because we own now three different series versions, three different sets of Harry Potter, they get their own shelf. So these turned around ones are my original publications when all the Harry Potters came out on hardcover because that's the only one I want. These are a new version that I don't think I ever showed you guys these. Uh, Jake got these for me as a wedding gift. I'll grab one. On top of the bookshelf is another pile, but Jake has two hardcover and two paperback copies and I can't handle it, so they're not allowed on the bookshelf. Um, yeah, I don't think I actually showed you these. This was the wedding gift that Jake got for me. It is the Incomplete Harry Potter series um, rebound. So um, uh, this guy on Etsy takes the books, takes all the bindings off. You get a magnet book cover on each one which is the Horcruxes. You have a different wand on each one and he binds it with your house. So Jake got me a Hufflepuff set because I'm a Hufflepuff and the beginnings have different quotes that partake to, that go to that book. Um, I haven't read through all of them and then they've got like quotes in the back, but each, ooh, God. each book is different on the inside for that and then it's just like, the actual book. Is there anything else that he changed? Nope, that's it. Um, yeah, so those are my books. That's what I want to read. I'm just ready to fall face first into some more fantasy things. So <laughs> that is basically it. The only thing I've been up to is Indian Tangled stuff, Advent things, and this week watching the news. That's basically been it. I'm hoping after the advents get out, I'm going to take a week off at least and just relax, do a deep clean of the apartment because it desperately needs it, maybe do some sewing. I think I figured out the closure to my Tudor inspired modern dress. So just do things and not have a timeline on any of them. I'm very excited for that. I do plan in case I don't podcast until the prize drawing for the pumpkin mail. I am planning on doing vlogmas this year. I know it's not going to be the same because we don't have activities to go to because pandemic times, but I'm still going to do it. So yeah, that is a plan uh, to do vlogmas. I'm very excited. I think that is going to create the normalcy that we have been craving, especially now that things are ramping up. Connecticut has gone back into phase two in our lockdown, so we are decreasing the amount of um, people in events, in groups, in restaurants, that that sort of thing. I, um, they added like, or it's like 14 or 25 new um, red cities. So those are like very high um, positivity rates. Milford's not on that, luckily. Pandemic times. So yeah, with that, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. And uh, supporting the shop, supporting the podcast. So yeah, uh, hopefully I will get another podcast out within the month of November. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the shop and we will see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>